So um, in this video, as promised, I've finally got around to looking at the footwell uh, for the for the Hudson Hunslet building 16mm um, scale. Um, it's been a bit of a battle, to be honest. Um, this took way longer than planned. Um, and I still haven't actually managed to put together a, a full model yet. Uh, but I think that this print, well, these three pieces, um, are the solution. Um, there'll be another video, obviously, when I've, when I've actually put the put the thing in together and proved it, but I thought I'd show you what I've got so far uh, and the kind of um, rather frustrating process that I've been through to get to this point. Um, so what I've got here in the end is you can see that from the top you can't really see the, a, a footwell opening but what you can see obviously is where there's a thinner bit of plastic uh, and this is actually kind of sacrificial. The idea is you'll cut this piece out um, and that will op open up the, the footwell um, and then on the bottom, you can also see that the footwell, if I look at it from the side, um, has no bottom. Uh, and for that, there's a, a piece of plastic that I've printed that basically um, sits on top of the on top of the footwell. Um, or would do if I get it the, the right way around. There we go. Um, on, on the bottom of the footwell like that, um, so that it kind of provides the, the bottom. Um, and there's a, there's a locating strip and, and everything for that. Uh, and then the buffer beam has had... The retaining peg uh, moved basically to the middle uh, and that now fits uh, against the side of the footwell um, to kind of position it in place uh, and that looks like it's going to work going to work quite nicely um, but it took me a while to get to this point as you can tell it's not necessarily the most um, obvious solution having kind of the footwell with no floor and the top closed in um, isn't exactly an ideal uh, situation but um, as you'll see in a second there's a good reason for it. Um, what we have here <laughs> is all the, the parts that it took me to get uh, to this point, oh, and, and, and this bit as well. Um, but yeah, so I've printed, what, six um, foot plates and chassis um, before finding one that actually works. So I just thought I'd kind of take you slowly through um, the process of, of what did and didn't work. Um, so the main issue, as, you, as we know, is that the print fills the print bed. Uh, and that means that when it kind of pulls off um, each layer, um, obviously if the te if the kind of the tension's not reasonably equal across the whole base plate, things twist. Uh, now with the the print that does work, you can see that across most of it, certainly up to the edges, it's pretty um, it's pretty even. Um, so it, it kind of pulls off, and it's kind of reasonably symmetrical as well. And these holes, being really close to the centre, don't tend to affect the the edges too much. Um, but uh, that's obviously caused problems as I've printed these other test pieces. So um, here was my first attempt, which was just to print the foot the footwell in place. I had a very thin, um, I think it was a millimetre, I think it was half a millimetre possibly, uh, wide um, edge so that there was something here um, in the hope that that would, that would be a bit more uh, effective at keeping the, the piece together. Um, but you can see that the, the side kind of didn't print very well right up against the edge um, you can also see that it didn't um, it didn't pull off the print bed very well when it was doing the first few layers the reason being that obviously you've now got this kind of thin piece down this edge so when it rips off this bit's not pulling off properly um, and essentially it ends up kind of warping um, and you can see in this print it's actually then caused this to warp all the way down this this side the whole edge is kind of drooped over um, plus because of the way it prints and I didn't add any supports the bottom of the footwell is is really badly um, printed because the first few layers that were printed of this um, weren't supported so it's kind of sagged all over the place um, so yeah that was a bit of a, a bit of a disaster as you can see looking at the side uh, that's not great um, so on the next one I took the footwell out with the intention that I would print um, a piece that went in as the footwell so I'd, I printed the footwell itself um, so that's kind of that's where the buffer is that's where the this side of the loco is um, and that's that's the footwell and it's quite nice and the idea was that it would kind of you can see it's kind of got a little little dint here and the idea was that it would lock in against the upright um, and cause it you know give you something nice to kind of glue in glue in place um, and in general, that kind of the idea at least was reasonably sound. But again, I still had this problem uh, with this thin bit 
um, not adhering to the base plate properly. So again, this edge drooped down, but the rest of it wasn't too bad. This this corner drooped on this print for some reason as well. I don't know whether that's just because as it pulled up and the tension went, it's kind of stayed um, symmetrical end to end. Um, I'm assuming that's kind of what's kind of what's happened here, but it's just because this this bit is too thin. So that one went on the the kind of scrap pile as well. Um, <clears throat> so we moved on to another piece, and this one. What I did was I added um, a kind of sacrificial strip across the end opening here in the hope that that would cause this piece to pull up uh, properly um, as it peeled off the base plate. But as you can see, it's still done the same thing. It's still dropped at this corner um, and the, the matching symmetrical corner as well. So that still still hasn't really uh, worked very well. So um, what I did on the next one was increase the print time for the first few layers, which in theory should make it stick better to the um, the build plate, which my hope was then it wouldn't it wouldn't be able to kind of droop. It would it would be much better um, stuck to the build plate and would lift uh, lift properly. Um, but it's actually it's 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 drooped not as badly as I expected, but I've, it's had other other weird issues, and uh, you can kind of see it just about here um, that the top couple of layers. And get the camera to do it. There we go. The top couple of layers that were printed for longer have kind of probably looked like they've stuck to the base plate, but then when it switches back to the normal time, um, it's kind of delaminated. It's not. It's not stuck at all. So you end up with this weird splitting effect, um, which has spread all the way around around this corner. Um, so this whole thing is now kind of falling apart. Um, the other problem with it with um, increasing the print time for those first few layers is that all the holes end up with a slightly wide uh, slightly narrower um shape because the it, it causes the the kind of the resin to kind of go slightly further than where you want when it cures so it tends to fill holes in um so this was a bit of a, a bit of a bust i thought it would it would work but you can see it's still drooping down at the corner and with all this stuff um not not right either uh, so again, that went on the on the rubbish pile. Um, <clears throat> this was a bit of a weird one. Um, I printed, I, I, I actually filled the whole of this top surface in like I have done on the final print um, and sliced it and then printed it without checking the the, the file. And it, for some reason, it, it didn't fill the hole in. Um, the, the slicing went wrong and it left the hole open. Um, but what it also did was it actually separated this time when I print. So basically, this is the same print as the as the last one. But this time, instead of kind of just splitting, um, it's actually ripped the the top layer off here. Um, so you can see as it pulls up, it's just torn. Uh, and this piece was actually still stuck um, was stuck to the base plate separately to the rest of the rest of the model. Um, so it just wasn't this piece, this corner essentially wasn't stuck to the base plate anymore there was a, there was it's a, which is why it's just kind of hanging free in, in in the air which is why it kind of droops down um so then we get to the the, the last but one um where here what i did was this is basically the same as the almost the same as the final print so i this has got this filled in um foot plate uh, but you can see it's still splitting uh, at these these corners um so what i've done <clears throat> on the final version is uh, this this I only did this fill in here uh, for three layers, which is the kind of the number of layers that the that the um, the printer prints extra long to get it to stick. Um, so on the final one, what I've actually done is print um, half a millimeter thick instead of just the first three layers, and that seems um, seems to have done the trick. So as you can see, this one's still drooping ever so slightly uh, and still splitting. And at this point, I also found that. I don't know whether it's the drooping or not, but when I fit the footwell, um, it doesn't it doesn't seem to fit perfectly. It's difficult to kind of see in here, but there's a there's a gap. This 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 side fits perfectly there, but down here it it's not in the right place. There's a little bit of a bit of a of an anomaly here where it sticks out. Um, so I think this might be due to it drooping. But I decided that the easier thing than trying to get this in place was to do what I've done on this on this final print. Uh, which is print the footwell sides in place, which helped to keep um, everything nice and square. Uh, and then I can stick the, the base on. And it doesn't matter really if the base is ever so slightly out of square. As long as it's square against the buffer beam, 
um, and closes all the holes at the bottom. It doesn't matter if it sticks out slightly on either side because you'll never see it because under it'll be underneath the it, it's hidden underneath the loco. Um, so that's the that's the kind of solution that I've um, that I've come up with. And as I say, um, so far looking at the part, there's no there's no kind of delamination. There's no obvious um, particular drooping um, of this corner now. Um, so I think that's kind of solved all the problems. I've also fixed a couple of issues that came up um, in some of the in some of the other parts. So I've actually increased the size of these holes uh, slightly um, to make sure that they 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 because they include the first three layers that they're not being made really really tight and underside sized. So. Um, yeah, so that looks that looks pretty good to me. I think that's pretty much ready to assemble now. Um, I did realise that when I printed the buffer beams, I still the one thing I haven't done is is the coupling blocks. Um, so these these still need need work. But I might actually just make this one up and see how it see how it works. Um, but it should, as I say, it should fit quite nicely. Um, it goes together reasonably well with that slotting in. And then, as I say, this extra plastic. Uh, floor piece um, slotting in it goes it goes in quite nicely um, <clears throat> so what I've you know it, and you can possibly just about see that the bottom of the footwell I've got a it's a bit difficult to see but there's a slight curve on the bottom so it looks like it's kind of the metal bending to get the, the nice bottom um, and that gives me um, a much wider lip than the actual thickness of the wall to glue to and it also gives me a very slight lip on this side here um, which again gives me something to glue glue the floor to. Um, so I'm hoping this is now pretty much um, the final final version of this this part. Um, as I say, it's got the hole for the radiator. This is the revised holes for the back of the the, the kind of engine engine bay with the the motor moved to the to the in between the axles. Um, so there's with the foot plate done the only other thing will be the mounting point for a seat but I'm not quite sure yet whether that will be a hole through this part and something in it or something that just kind of sticks on so that you get a bit of um, a bit of ability to position where you put the seat depending on what driver figure you want to use obviously you have to get your feet in the foot well uh, but it might be useful to be able to move the seat around ever so slightly um, so I might not actually put a hole in this piece for that I might just glue something on instead uh, but we'll have to see. So, yeah. So I think the next step for this is that I'll assemble uh, this as a working as a working piece. Um, <clears throat> that will allow me to fully check that having merged the um, the kind of the motor bogey piece and the foot piece into one, uh, everything all the dimensions are correct and that it, it's assemb easily it's easy to assemble. Um, and then I can finish off the body. Um, for that, I need to work out things like all the etched parts the front grille uh, and the rest of the kind of engine controls which are which I haven't looked at yet but they're all simple scale up from the four millimeter pieces I think I don't think there's anything kind of um, structural uh, or mechanical involved in those they're just kind of uh, detailing parts so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna assemble this um, and and see how it see how it goes so I need to cut cut this out uh, and then glue it all together um, and hopefully um, in the next video we'll see it running around and I might even manage to find something temporary to sit the driver on so he can have his feet feet in the footwell um, and, and see him driving around riding around on the track but that's for that's for the next video